Hey church, thanks for joining me tonight for Wednesday night Bible study, prayer time. Hope that you're having a great week. What a great Sunday we had at the street fair. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank God. Great weather um, and just uh, his blessings for sure. We had some great conversations with people and I uh, really believe the Lord blessed. I want to thank Brother James. He did an amazing job uh, really setting it all up and kind of could, took uh, oversight of it this year. And, and I'm really thankful and I know you are as well. We calculated that through the day we had close to 70 volunteers that came and helped which was amazing because I know many of our folks were away last weekend. So uh, we thank the Lord for that. Many of you helped either coming by the table for a few minutes, grabbing some flyers, walking up and down, passing them out, running balloons, helping at the table. Uh, our English church, Spanish congregation, Bangla congregation were represented. Of course, we had the group from Faith Baptist in Utah as well. So we just had a great day. Uh, we praise the Lord for that. Uh, we estimate we uh, distributed about 2,000 uh, John and Romans and uh, close to 3,000 gospel tracts on Sunday alone. Uh, and we're thankful for that. And so now let's pray as a church that God will use the scriptures, use the word, and that it will resonate in people's hearts and lives. And so, again, just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that had part in that and that helped. Uh, also, uh, be thinking ahead now. Uh, we we have a couple of weeks of a, of a lull or just some normal schedule. Our next big event is the Fall Festival, October 26. It's a Saturday, and from 12 to 2, just two hours. Uh, if you would pray, number one, uh, that people would come. It's really an open house for us. So we invite families, and we 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 meet parents and kids and. Uh, we have games and give out candy. And of course, everybody gets scriptures and a gospel track. It's good exposure. Uh, and so if you would pray that for a good day, that all go well. Pray for Brother James as he's helping oversee that as well. And then if you would consider helping us two hours, and two, only two hours. So uh, if you could come, that would be great. And then number three, uh, if you would invite someone, we have great cards uh, out at the uh, Welcome Center and then in the South Lobby and as well, and invite neighbors, family members. Uh, and then fourthly, please bring candy. That's something all of us can do. And so if you would pick up some bags of candy, drop them in the two bins, that would be a big help. And so be praying about that. And we're excited to be able to do some outreach. And so we praise the Lord for that. I want to encourage you to check your email tonight. Uh, for our updated prayer bulletin and uh, be praying uh, for our country. Of course, upcoming election, uh, not uh, not too far away. So let's be praying on that uh, and then be praying for Israel. And of course, October 7th was two days ago. Uh, be praying for uh, Israel. And we, we trust that God will use uh, what is happening to bring them close to him and people would come to faith. But Pray for our country and uh, pray for all that's going on and uh, be praying for our law enforcement. If you remember to pray for Pastor Rod Hall, he was here Sunday from Utah. He's running for a state school board uh, and uh, just to be good to have Christians in, in good positions. Uh, and so uh, remember to pray for him as well. And then our missionaries are the workmen's. You'll see their attached letter and you can read and, uh, about that and all that's happening and be praying for them. Uh, tonight we're in Exodus chapter 20 again. We've been going through the uh, Ten Commandments, and here's one that's really kind of applicable. They're all applicable. And again, remember, we don't follow the Ten Commandments. Uh, we are not uh, seeking to uh, get to heaven by keeping the Ten Commandments because that's futile and that's in vain. Jesus came, Matthew chapter 5, to fulfill the law. Uh, he's the only one that could do that. Uh, the law was a guide. The law was um, a teacher showing us that we needed a savior. Having said that, great principles uh, to follow that really would help us uh, at, uh, to be more like Christ as we consider um, these commandments that God gave to his people and principles behind it. Tonight's one of those where we we realize because um, we're in a different uh, dispensation, a different ministration of time. Uh, but the principle remains the same. The fourth commandment you find in verse number eight, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
um, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. So here God tells his people very clearly that I want you to take a day and and rest. I want you to take a day and remember. I want this to be a day that is different than the other six. Now, the Sabbath day uh, is uh, um, that last day of the week. Uh, so it would be equivalent to our Saturday. The word Sabbath means intermission. And so God told his people, I want you to take the time, and in verse 8, remember, uh, take a day and remember. What were they to remember? Remember all of his creation. Remember all that he has done. Uh, we need to remember, and at times we don't, and at times we don't take the time to remember. Life is so busy, and we're thinking about the next thing that is to come, and we need to remember and we're also told that he told his people to use the day to rest, that they needed to rest. The animals that they used to work their farms needed to rest. The land itself needed to rest. You'd find later that God would say every seven years, uh, uh, on that eighth year, take it off. You don't plow, don't plant, let the land rest. And remembering and resting are vital and important into, uh, in our lives today as followers of Jesus Christ. We know now there are several religious groups that still follow this Sabbatarianism where they, uh, they take uh, Saturday for their religious observances. The Jewish people do that. Seventh-day Adventists do that. And quite frankly, we know we can worship God at any time and, and at any day. This is not a steadfast, you must go to church on Saturday because, quite frankly, when God gave this command, there was no such thing as a church. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when Jesus came, and, and, and you'll remember in, in Mark chapter 2, in a great passage, verses 21 through 28, uh, Jesus was teaching the disciples, look, because I'm here, things are going to change. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm teaching new uh, under me, under grace. Uh, you'll be able to do far above and beyond what the law will even told you to do. And he would use the illustration of pouring new wine in an old wineskin. And, uh, and, and, and essentially beware of those who try to force uh, legalism or continuance of the law because I came to fulfill the law and I am better than the law. I came to bring freedom, not bondage from the law. And so he would go on to say, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. By the way, the Son of Man, speaking of himself, is Lord also of the Sabbath. So we don't get tied into, oh, wait a minute, we're supposed to have church on a Saturday. We could have church on a Saturday and have church on a Tuesday. As a matter of fact, if you've been at our church, you know we have something pretty much going on all the time. So why is it that um, we don't necessarily keep the Sabbath that was given to his people under the law for that time? You find, however, that when Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, that they began to worship him on the first day of the week. Why? Um, they wanted to honor him. Here's some reasons. Jesus arose that first day of the week. He appeared to Mary and James and, and Peter and, and, um, and John and to the, those on the road of, 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 um, to Emmaus on that first day of the week. Uh, he preached to the believers, Paul did, on the first day of the week in Acts chapter 20. Paul told the Corinthians that they were to give to the Lord on the first day of the week. Uh, John, in his Revelation chapter 1, uh, said that he received the visions on the Lord's day. And then historically, we know that the, the early church always started their week uh, worshiping the Lord and meeting together. And and that's a, a great thing, and that's why we continue to meet on Sundays. As a matter of fact, though, when this new thing called the church came into being, 
that they met every day to worship the Lord. But they certainly uh, emphasized the first day of the week. And again, you probably heard the saying that God needs to be first in our day in the morning or he'll be last the rest of the day. God deserves to have the best and the first. And so as a church, uh, the church can collectively and continually met together on the first day of the week. The author of Hebrews said in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching that you should continue to meet and yeah, meet on that first day, meet on that second day, meet on the fifth day, meet more and more as you see the day getting closer for our Lord's return. So the law was given to God's people and to point toward a Messiah coming. Jesus came and fulfilled the law. And then he began to talk about this new institution called the church and that it would come. Acts chapter 2, the church comes. Jesus arose from the dead. They began to meet and worship on the first day of the week. And so we should continue to worship the Lord collectively together and take time to do that. You know as well as I do that life is extremely busy. And if we do not dedicate ourselves and build it in our schedule, we will not be faithful to come and worship the Lord on the first day of the week. Our church's goal is truly, to be honest, to get uh, every person uh, in our church one service on Sunday, somewhere on Sunday. And then secondly, we would love to get you back during the week to be a part of a small group. And some small groups are on Sunday as well, if that legitimately is your only day. But we want to get you back. Why? Because we need that shot in the arm. We need that encouragement. One of the reasons why we do a video on Wednesdays is to be an encouragement and try to, to unite us, even uh, though we're not physically together, but united through the, these great technological means. Why? Uh, we need to, to be together and honor the Lord uh, collectively as a church. So those same principles for the Sabbath, to rest, very important. To remember, very important. To show God reverence and respect, very important. And uh, we need a day to do that. And our society that used to honor that, uh, whether people were churchgoers or not, certainly has changed now. We have six-day work weeks, seven-day work weeks, and that's unfortunate. Stores are open all the time. God has kind of been brushed aside. If you're going to uh, uh, worship the Lord collectively with brothers and sisters, you're going to have the opportunity to remember like you should and even to rest. It, it's going to come when you schedule it, when you're intentional, when I'm intentional about it. So what are we to do on the Lord's Day when we're to meet? And why is that so important? And we're told that it is because... Uh, it well, first of all it gives us a chance to reunite i mean we've been busy we're gone we a lot of us don't see each other except on sundays and it gives us a chance to get together acts chapter 2 3000 people trust christ and they're displaced and dispersed from their families and what do they do they meet together in that case they met together every day um, we can't maybe always do that, but when you get together at church and then you come together Sunday, that first day, let's start the week off right. We, we unite with each other. We get to see people. We get to pray with one another and laugh with one another and cry with one another. And together we get to worship the Lord in song. We get to learn together. We get to uh, pray for one another. And it's very important that we do that. Uh, the, the early Christians met together to to learn the apostles' doctrine. They met together to have fellowship. They met together to break bread, to remember what Christ had done when he died for uh, our sins. And they met together to pray. And so those, those should be the tenets. We seek to have those tenets in our church uh, in every service that we do, where we can learn, we can pray, we can fellowship, we can worship. And that's why we need to do that. If you never come to church or you're hit and miss, you're depriving yourself uh, of, of that which is needful for your, your Christian life and walk, much less disobeying God. We also meet together so that we can rejoice in the Lord. And look, you and I can pray and we can learn individually all week. We can worship privately and we need to do that. Sunday is a time when we get together collectively to to 
to really pour out all that we have learned, all that we have experienced during the week, and collectively rejoice in the Lord together. In Psalm 22, in verse 22, the psalmist would say, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, and in the midst of the congregation I will praise thee. The psalmist goes on in verse 25 of that same psalm, I will praise thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. I meet together to worship, to honor your name, to, to lift you, you up, to pay my vows. And so when we get together uh, collectively, we are able to do these things together. It's a great time for us to remember God, remember his creation, remember his provision, remember our redemption, remember the bond that we have as brothers and sisters in Christ because of Jesus. It's a time for us to remember our mission where we are called to go into all the world and preach the gospel, and it should produce gratitude and worship. And I hope you know that from a practical experience, and when you come to church, it's encouraging, and it lifts your spirit, and it changes you, and I pray that's the case. And then lastly, and as importantly, you and I need to be in the house of the Lord and take time to do that so that we can respond to his word. Ecclesiastes 5, Solomon gives us some instruction on how to act in church and be ready to hear and, uh, and don't make false promises. And uh, he encourages us to be ready and prepare our hearts. I don't know about you, but there's been many a Sunday where I came in unprepared and my mind's a hundred different places and I, I, uh, uh, it took me a while to, to, to get mentally and emotionally where, where I needed to be so the Lord could speak in my life and it would do us well to prepare ourselves. Uh, even Saturday night, get ready and knowing the devil's going to do everything he can to distract. And if you're committed to come, you come and say, Lord, open my heart and then let me receive the word and then respond. James talks about it, be a, be a receiver, but then be a doer. And so, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you know, I watch church and I just, uh, I, I get to do church at home. You're only getting one part, you're receiving. You need to be in church because you have something to offer other people. And we know that God puts people in the church according to his will and he gifts us according to his will because uh, he wants us to all fit together as a, as a as a almost like a puzzle so that the church operates at full capacity. When you're not there and I'm not there, something's missing. Um, and there are people God wants you to speak into and people God wants you to minister to and people God wants you to encourage. And when you're not there to do that, to to give out, then that is lacking. And you and I can only take so much in and until we let it out, then we 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 can't take any more in. And so it's imperative that we don't just watch church, but we be the church, that we're together. And so um, we we need to come and listen and then put it into practice. We need laborers. And this week we saw that, uh, that the effectiveness of laborers accomplishes much. But, you know, come, be a part, serve, get involved. Uh, and all in an effort to to worship the Lord and to remember the Lord and to 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 make sure that you are spiritually refreshed. And so take time off. You know, I remember when I was a kid on Sundays, we'd go to church and then I wasn't allowed to go outside and play with my friends after that. I, I wasn't even allowed to really go outside and shoot some baskets or whatever. It was just a kind of a day of rest. It was a day to uh, just get refreshed. And that's a good thing. And the, the greatest refreshment comes uh, with the Lord. So I want to encourage you, if you're not faithful, maybe you're tuning in, uh, but you're, you're kind of hit and miss, be faithful. Uh, get into church. And uh, if you are faithful, I want to say thank you and realize the importance of that and encourage others to get into the house of the Lord. And so it's a great principle. Uh, these first four commands relate directly to our relationship with God. Have no other gods. Don't worship other statues. Don't take his name in vain and don't forget him. Uh, take time intentionally to worship, remember him, and in doing so, provide physical but spiritual rest for your souls. And so it is through him that we have that rest. So I hope that'll be an encouragement to you tonight. Check out your email. Let's be praying. We're looking forward to having a great, great Sunday. Let's pray. Lord, thanks so much for 
the reminder and really the command. And we see in the New Testament how the, that the, the followers of Christ met on that first day to start their week off right. Before we go to work, before we go to school, let's start off right, Lord, remembering who you are and what you have done. And so, Lord, help us to, to guard that time and not allow other things to take away, Lord, from uh, the Lord's day. And so I'm thankful for uh, our church and the opportunity we have, Lord, the platform to worship and remember you. Help us to, to be faithful to do that. Bless us as we pray tonight, Lord, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week. We love you. Thank you for all you're doing. God willing, we'll see you Sunday.